Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Kami Dogu Podcast. My name is Christopher Veljanovsky, and joining me today in the virtual podcasting booth is not one, but two legends. First up, we have Tornado Watch Toasty. Toasty! And next up, we have a very, very cheeky boy by the name of Lou. Cheeky, cheeky. That's my middle name, Bowie. (laughs) (laughs) I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank everyone who has supported us so far. Please continue to spread the word, smash that follow or subscribe button, and give us a rating or review wherever you watch or listen to the podcast. All right, people. We are here to do something a little different today. With the recent tease from Todd Garner indicating that he's back at work for the next Mortal Kombat sequel, we've seen it only proper that now is the perfect time to begin watching the other movie installments that have been released throughout the years. First up, and what we will be concentrating on today, is the very first OG Mortal Kombat film, released in late summer of 1995. The same film that blew up to be a box office hit and was highly regarded as being one of the most successful video game movies. It is a delight to review this very fine piece of cinema while once again joined by our good friend and YouTuber, Lou. Mate, honestly, I've got so many memories with this film. Like, when I was younger, I wasn't allowed to even watch this film. If mom, if my mum actually hears this podcast now, like honestly, she's gonna whack me, silly. Like she's gonna <laughs> slap me left and right because there's so many things like, I said to her that never happened when I was a kid. And this watch, watching this film numerous times is one of them. <laughs> Even to the age of like fourteen, I think that she still said like you're not allowed to watch it. And oh yeah, mate. I lost count how many times I watched it before the time that she actually realized I had watched it. You know what I mean? (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's, it's funny you say that because, um, strangely enough, uh, as a kid, a uh, very young child, I watched this a number of times and, uh, they were okay with it because it wasn't, um, you know, excruciatingly violent, you Mm. know, like, like the new one, for instance, you know, Mm. it was, you know, it was toned back from the studio to be PG-13, so it was tolerable for my for my parents. Um, uh, yeah, the only thing that they would kind of um, be very iffy about was the fatalities in the games, but mm. I barely ever seen them as a child. It was a big thing when my babysitter would come over and he'd be like, here's a note, and he'd put them on, you know what I mean? I'm like, ah, yes! <laughs> you know, so, uh, yeah, the movies were, were very, you know, uh, dim next to the game so it was all right yeah in terms of uh when i first seen it chris i vividly remember uh renting it from a place called popcorn video and uh it was vhs tape and uh, i remember watching it actually with my parents and it was uh, one of the best times ever for me because uh, <laughs> as i've said before you know, being such a diehard fan of the games and, and having, you know, they've been with me for so many years, I, I it took me a while to realize that there was a movie. And then when I realized, I was like, what? You're like, you know, my my brothers and <laughs> sisters, essentially, in this game, which is everything to me, it, they're in a movie as well. So when I seen the movie, it just blew my mind. And um, it was executed very well, in my opinion, as we will discuss here now. Mm. Yeah, I mean, in terms of my experience, I in Australia, it was rated 15 plus. Mm. Um, and so I had to go with a parent and my dad took me to the movies. And I remember seeing it on the big screen. Oh, and my. I think I was <laughs> jealous as hell. It would have been when it jealous came out. Jealous as hell. <laughs> it, would, it would have been, you know, I think I was, I was nine at the time. So I was still too young to, um, you know, to, to go on my own. But to experience it on the big screen was incredible and you know by today's standards you know there weren't as many you know the screen wasn't as nice and the sound wasn't as incredible as it is now but sure. at the time for a kid to walk in and be like i'm going to watch mortal kombat that yeah. was the, nothing top that really mate i envy you so much right now chris <laughs> my <laughs> dream is to see mortal kombat on the big screen man <laughs> yeah. it's joking. my dream it was, it was I, I didn't get to see the 2021 uh, version because of COVID was so bad here in Canada. Oh, man. I was screwed. 
So the cinemas managed- won't open for you to watch that at all? Sorry? That you didn't have the cinemas open during COVID? It was all shut down? No, it was completely nah, shut same. down the entire time it was out because it was brutal <laughs> here mm. in Ontario, Canada. Awful. <clears throat> Yeah, so it's the same a- here, like over in the UK. Like, it, like literally, I think like cinemas like reopened in either May or June, and then like when they did reopen, Mortal Kombat wasn't actually on there. But like a week later, it was. Uh, so I took my stepbrother to see it. So I, m- luckily enough, even though I had watched it like the day it came out. Um, like, still, I went to the cinema to watch it like two months later, and I'm still like it raised up my score for that for the, the 2021 movie for certain so but the 95 i still want to see it in the cinema even though god oh. knows how many times <laughs> i've watched it i need to see yeah. that film in the big screen like i need to see it <laughs> i know well, i honestly I know. think you know if we look at the three films in general you know i think this one has the most iconic intro you know the definitely the dragon oh, spinning yes. that theme song, hearing it for the first time, the flame shooting through. <laughs> like there is no better way to start. And and moving yeah. on from that, you know the introduction with Shang Tsung and Liu Kang's brother Chan. Mm. Mm. Like as soon as that starts, that was an incredible way to start the movie. Like mm. none of the other movies start off with a punch as hard as that. Nah. Agreed. Hundred percent. Very agreed. effective. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the iconic, your soul is mine, or your brother's soul is mine, that was yeah. born right there and then. Mm. And Kerry became Precisely. an instant legend just right there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, definitely. <Yep. laughs> definitely. Mm-hmm. I do have a question about that, though, out of curiosity. So, like, in the Mortal Kombat, like, tournaments, obviously, once you win one, you've got to wait another generation or whatever. Like... How did Shang Tsung actually, like, fight uh, Chen? Because, like, was it, like, was that, like, part of the Mortal Kombat from, like, a generation before? Or are you just allowed to, like, just battle someone to Mortal Kombat? Or was it, like, okay, you're, play- you're now part of Mortal Kombat. This is round one. You're fighting Shang Tsung. Because I'm not being funny. That is pretty out of order if that was the case. <laughs> I don't think yeah. so. I think that's where it kind of falls round, short a bit one, because it Shang doesn't Tsung. really... Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it didn't really. That part wasn't really explained, was it? It was just no. It wasn't. Yeah, no. he he killed actually, his brother, but why? Mm, Under what mm. circumstances? Yeah, I mean that's very. I true. was actually. I was wondering if you guys would actually know this one. To be fair, <laughs> I was just like, I, I wonder because I've been having this thing ever like for years, and I've been looking into things. I was wondering if uh, either you two may may or may or not know. <laughs> No, but that is a, a very, very good question, though, actually. You got mm. me thinking about that shit now. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess one thing that this, because this is was uncharted territory, you know, we had the Street Fighter movie, which was a turd. And <laughs> in- <laughs> <laughs> that's pointing it lightly. <laughs> I know certain people that'll be listening to this yeah. podcast that would love to reach through the screen and strangle you right now. Hey, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I, still, I still liked it in its own right. But in general, Definitely. I think. This movie really set the standard <laughs> for video game movies in general because there weren't really that many around. And, you know, for mm. example, you had like the Mario movie too. And that was, yeah. <laughs> that uh, was, you know, there's no words fail. to explain that. But Mortal Kombat was pretty faithful to the gaming series. Mm. Yeah. And if you have, you have to, if you think about it, like, for example, Johnny Cage, he didn't, you know, P- Daniel Pacino portrayed him on the screen, but. There were no cutscenes, like there was no real personality behind the biographies. So these are the first mm. times we're actually seeing these characters fleshed out. And I think, mm. you know, I think they did an incredible job. Oh, yes. Definitely. Yes. Uh, speaking of Johnny Cage, to be honest, I think out of all the uh, actors that have portrayed the character, Lyndon Ashby by far just reigns superior. Um, mm. I think he did, uh, yeah, an absolutely tremendous job, and um, I think it's going to be hard to top that bar. Uh, in terms of like you know like that basic look, I think Matt Mullins probably had the best look, but um, uh, Lyndon I think was by far the best actor, and the chemistry that he has on screen is just phenomenal Mm. and Mm. the amount of um improv that he put into it was 
was very impressive and um it carried over a lot a lot of his lines were actually improv like the 500 hundred dollar sunglasses uh, scene that was him so mm. it's it's really great well yeah so good i think one well i have something to admit and i'm almost ashamed to admit it but i haven't actually i hadn't actually seen this movie for like 20 years so when i sat down yeah. to watch it it was like watching it for the first time again. <laughs> Don't look at me like that. Who are you? <laughs> like, yeah, it was like watching it for the first time again. So I was reliving all those first time experiences. And mm. after not seeing it for 20 years, you know, I admit I kind of looked at like a photo of Lyndon in the movie and I was like, was he actually that good? Because the Johnny Cage that we know now is a big joker and he's, you know, a crazy mm. guy. But watching him, you know, everything unfold, I remembered the lines, but watching it again, I was like, man, he killed it. He did an incredible job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And the fact that they even brought him back for like MK11 as well, mm. like just to do the yeah. lines and, oh, it's so good. I'm not going to lie. Like, I was actually playing a bit of MK11, a bit of Johnny Cage, just simply because of that. <laughs> <laughs> and I find it most impressive as well, how he really, you know, he really went uh, head over heels with this whole thing because um, uh, Robin Shu especially really convinced him to do uh, as much of his uh, fight scenes that he possibly could. And mm. uh, he got the shit beaten out of him by Chris Casamassa. <laughs> like he got kicked, <laughs> like he wore protective padding, but he got kicked so incredibly hard that he actually severely damaged his, uh, his kidney from a kick and he was pissing blood you know yeah. that, that's dedication mm. you know i know i know the thing you're on about and it, i know the exact bit that it was um you know from the reptile scene when he throws him into that like pollard oh or robin shoe yeah yeah when he <clears throat> yeah when he's being thrown into that that's uh, how he actually done his side in that like because I he think broke he'd done his ribs, like 20, uh, 20 ribs. takes or yeah, he done like 20 odd takes or something. And it was that one that they threw in there. That was uh, actually the one that he, that's what he broke, wasn't it? That's they, that shot there. You see it in, they the, kept it in the film. It's like, yeah, that's when he, uh, he actually broke his rib. <laughs> <And then laughs> it's like pissing out blood. That was, that, that's the shot. Yeah. That's the money maker. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I really want to point out in this film having perspective seeing having seen the newest one i really love the idea of that there was a tournament i think that was severely missing mm. from the new one and i hope they take the second film in that direction but one thing mm. that was amazing was how raiden explained everything so definitely oh i was yeah. paying a lot of attention like anyone who plays the games knows about you know the 10 mortal Kombat tournaments and the rest of it but he really went there were plenty of scenes where he was actually explaining everything which was really good and mm. I was trying to watch it as well, not only as a fan, but as like a, you know, if, if this was thrown in front of a casual, just someone on the street who mm. had never heard of Mortal Kombat, of course. they could actually follow the film, which I thought was incredible. Mm. And um, like, for example, the the scenes that like the uh, the scenery, the locations they chose were breathtaking. Oh, in Thailand. Um, yeah. To me, oh, one thing man. I want to point out actually yeah. is when when they when Liu Kang goes to the Temple of Light to essentially mm. um, you know when he confronts all those monks, I got like deception vibes from that because there was like you know there was a gong ringing and there were all these monks running yeah. and I was like man this takes me back to the conquest days you know <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah very good very good mm -hmm. yeah definitely and I think one thing that makes this movie special to me is yes it was filmed in the nineties. But it has that real 90s flair to it too. So there were plenty of slow motion, mm. you know, scenes, tons of mm. iconic one-liners. And it it was <laughs> it was had a bit of cheese to it, but it was it wasn't apologizing for that. It wanted to be slightly funny, slightly cheesy. You know, when mm. when um yes. during the Goro fight, you know, you know, Raiden slaps the guy and goes, ha, sorry. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it's funny you mention that because, um, you know, they wanted all those different ki kinds of emotion in there. In terms of the comedy, Lyndon was obvious, but uh, uh, Raiden was perceived to be a much more serious character. Mm. 
Mm. But the studio kind of gave him that leeway. And so Christopher, you know, he really added those funny bits, actually. And, uh, you know, it stuck. I think it really worked. And, uh, you know, everybody seemed to, to, to love it. And it carried over to his character in Mortal Kombat Conquest as well from Jeff Meek. So, you mm. know, I love that part. I think Christopher Lambert absolutely nailed the role. To me, in terms of the movies, he's still the iconic portrayal of Raiden. And oh, I think definitely. Raiden is a character that I believe should always be ultra powerful, but he never comes across as ultra powerful. Whereas some scenes in his film, Raiden seemed quite powerful, like people feared him, which is something mm. I think the games and the other movies miss. Mm. Definitely, because yeah, I think well, they um, done it in this one where it was like he's not allowed to compete, um, and like even after they like Sonya, Johnny, and Liu Kang had that like little fight against the um, at, well the other warriors on the island. Um, I think shortly after that, I think that's when it was like you know it's hard, ugh, trying to. Trying to think of what I'm actually trying to get to, like, a point. Um, <laughs> talk to you, say, say, mate. <laughs> okay, well, where are we in space and time here? <laughs> yeah. well, let's, let's go to the... Uh, let's go to when they're at the dock. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Johnny Cage says to Liu Kang, you know, here's some cash, take my bags, and he just throws it off the pier. Like, you don't see Liu Kang as... A character like that and i totally forgot about that scene but i'm like that's that's cool and when the boat rolls in mm. like you know it has the the mortal kombat head on it the the dragon head and you mm. know they they went all out with it you could tell being a 90s film you could tell like they were in a studio and you know some things look kind of cheap but you know they they went to a lot of effort with even the boats rowing toward the island like they looked incredible and you know you had this the flares of light coming through the clouds like it looked like a really ethereal place mm. yes i agree i think they did a, a a wonderful job with the yeah with the sets and everything else for that matter as well um yeah you, you mentioned the the film locations uh, before like like thailand stuff like this uh, some of the most beautiful looking scenes in the movie i found were when you could see that the sun was pretty prevalent and there's kind of like that orange mm. hue, you know, like when Johnny mm. Cage is talking to Sonia, uh, uh, you know, um, about his plan with Goro and stuff like that. I thought that was so beautifully um, directed, shot, uh, and the dialogue was great too. So, you know, I really appreciated that for sure. So speaking of which, definitely. Same with Liu Kang as well. That Luke yeah, Hansley yeah, with Luke on Hansley. the yeah. beach as well. well they, honestly, I yeah. felt like that's what they uh, tried to mimic from the uh, from uh, 2021. Like you know, you had uh, Lynn, uh, Ludi Lin, like going into yeah. uh, out front of sunset. I felt like that's what they tried <laughs> to mimic a little bit. I, I was thinking what? that. I was thinking. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously, Liu Kang is like the, the, the main star of this film. If you had to compare him to Ludi Lin. And their performances and their portrayal of Liu Kang in general, who would you say did a better job? Because it's it's hard to say because oh, man. there's such different movies and Definitely. different time and space. Could you pick one or did they both do an amazing job in their own right? Toasty, I'll let you go first, my man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> man, that is a tough question. Uh, they were both so good uh, in their own way. Um I felt in the fight scenes. In terms, in terms, in terms of what I think is more authentic to the games, I'm not gonna lie. I, I actually think Ludi Lin probably uh, was there more so. Um, mm. You know, he because we we really got that kind of Bruce Lee vibe from uh, from Ludi, and um, you know, Liu Kang is a very a very humble, a very sweet person. He really is. And Ludi also really uh, put that into the film, which I loved. Um, Robin was more of a, oh, this is all bullshit. No, it's not true. It's not true. And he was that really rough kind of mm. guy. And But don't get me wrong. Robin Shu is a legend. And 
it, he really made the character iconic, stand out, and you know, in his own way, he really made it um, outrageously good as well. So it's it's really hard to pick. You know, I love them both. Hmm. Fair. Yeah. I mean, for me personally, I would actually say like I, I completely agree everything that you're saying. They're toasty, like near enough, like down to tea, but like. I feel like with Robin Shoes like performance, there's just so many little things that built up for me that like just overtook Ludi. Like that's even with the martial arts, I would say as well. But like if I were doing a comparison from things like yeah, you have Ludi Lin's like fireballs and like how well he's able to like just bring him out. He's even just meditating. He's just on the wall like having it in his hand. But then I found like the facts, like you have like the bicycle kick from Ludi Lin. I didn't feel like that executed nowhere near as powerful as Robin Shoes one. And I think no. it's because like you know it's about to come kind of thing. And it was like, uh, I don't know. I feel like the 95 versions of the bicycle kick is so much better than the 2021s. But then, oh. like you say, there's just so many little things like Ludi Lin's performance from there, like Robin Shoes, like story throughout even though it's like doesn't really like in line with the uh, games and such it's it's such a split in the middle question but yeah to be fair i think i'm just a bit biased and i love <laughs> i love robin shoe he's my boy <laughs> <laughs> he is he so, is legendary man he is yeah <laughs> mate definitely. so i guess we'll we'll move on to uh say bridget wilson as sonia so what did you think of her portrayal i thought she was a mm. little I know Sonya is a hard ass, but she, I think she was a little too intense. She sort of loosened up toward the end, but she was a little too stark for quite a lot, a while mm. into the movie. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to have to agree with that. I thought it was almost a, a little bit overkill with that. Um, I think with Sonya's character, you got to have some of that, but there needs to be the balance. And, um, uh, it's funny because you can watch the sequel after Annihilation and Sandra Hess, her, her attitude is, is quite different. You know, I've mm -hmm. seen a number of people on, uh, on, the, on the forums or, or Twitter that uh, actually prefer Sandra. And I find that pretty interesting. Uh, and then you can look at, at Jessica and the recent film. And, and to me, I think Jessica had that perfect medium. Mm. and uh, she really uh, no gave doubt. off the look the most. So I, mm. I think she's my number one there. But uh, Bridget is, is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> she is. And I think she did do a, a good job. Uh, it's just I wish they kind of toned that certain side of her down a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Mm. Mm. I mean, yeah, I would actually just say with um, Bridget Wilson, it's like I think, again, I think it's even just down with the chemistry because um, you know that Sonya Blade's um, story for Mortal Kombat 95 is to, uh, to get Kano. And it's kind of similar for the 2021, just with the Arcana and everything else. It's Kano that has it and not her. And it's like, again, that kind of like falls down to the chemistry, how well they are together. And, that, and again, like Mortal Kombat 2021 had like so many good things between both Kano and Sonya for the, that one. But with, I don't know, with the 95 version, I would still say like even Sonya and Kano for then, I think they're just so much better personally, just because there's like, I think it fits the tone of Mortal Kombat more, where it's more of a chase and like you finally get there. And then when you see him, it's just such a, like stare down and it's like oh you see this i'm gonna cut it like you know put a big smile on your partner's face though like it's like oh mate if you heard that and you was going through the same situation you want to bash that boy <laughs> straight in the face give him a left right good night boys you know what i'm saying I think that's <laughs> and an interesting an interesting bit i wanted to add in actually about that even though uh, the 95 movie did a good job with that there actually originally was to be even more of a, of a thorough look on that side of things with the movie. And it's a shame that they dialed back a bit mm. in the novelization of the film. Uh, there's a special forces task force that is sent out to apprehend uh, a number of black dragon thugs. 
And uh, upon this operation, the uh, commanding lieutenant gets uh, killed by Kano. And this lieutenant is uh, the partner of Sonia. So to actually see that, I think, would have been good for the audience. Yeah, and fur- furthermore, if you read the uh, official movie magazine, for sure, it's also indicated um, more specifically that Sonia's partner is uh, actually her fiance. So I thought that was all. Oh, the more- really? Yes, I That's thought that cool. was all the more intriguing. Yeah. So the fact that they uh, eliminated that, uh, didn't even mention it in the movie, is kind of questionable mm. to me. Because mm. I think that would have made the audience bond to her even more and really understand just how much she wants to get at this guy. To really and that would have taken that, a lot so. of the starkness yeah. off her character because she just seemed like, yeah, she, she was set on a mission. That was it. Nothing else mattered. There was no real human side to her. Whereas mm. that would have, yeah, mm. helped with that. I mean, she does obviously drop off like little hints in there to say like, um, something to do with a partner anyway, doesn't she? Um, in the film. So it does give like a bit of a background to say like why she is as annoyed or whatever, like going off uh, for vengeance or whatever. But yeah, still completely agree. It would be good to have, if, to have actually seen it play out and like what the partner actually yeah. meant to Sonia, especially if it was the fiance. That's crazy. I never knew that. That's actually yeah. mental. So cool. Yeah. I only find it here on Comedy Podcast, <laughs> eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, what did you think of um, Kano in this movie? Because he, obviously, Josh Lawson in the newest movie killed it, but this was more of a classic mm. Kano with the faceplate. Yeah. Um, I mean, admittedly, yes. the accent was off. The accent seems to always be off with Kano, especially if you're an Australian. They yeah. either sounds <laughs> British or God knows what else. But what did you think about his... Would you arrive with that, Chris? Why, <laughs> would you okay <laughs> with the fact that the accent was off that bad? Yeah, I watched it and he literally sounded British to me in this movie. Yeah, I, um, I thought the same. Funny, though. <laughs> Actually, he wasn't... <laughs> funny, eh? Tre- Trevor Goddard wasn't aiming for an Australian accent. He was aiming for a different kind. Uh, I can't remember sp- exactly what it is, but uh, some people kind of thought that it was Australian ish. And, um, funny enough, they kind of, uh, as we know, incorporated that into the games. Trevor Goddard does have some Australian roots, but that isn't what he was actually aiming for. So it's kind of funny that you guys mentioned that. Um, but you know what he did deliver, what he did, uh, bring to the screen uh, in terms of, uh, you know, not just accent, but performance, it was all, uh, it was magnificent. It, mm. He really, really made Kano stand out. And as you have said, it's, it's, I feel, you know, it, it's more true to the games. You know, he, he, he's that mercenary that really just doesn't give a, a flying fuck. You know what I mm. mean? Just, yeah, I, I think he did a great job. Um, the, the fight scene, uh, was all right. Um, Speaking of that, you know, it's too bad uh, that that is the only fight scene that uh, Sonya was involved with Mm. because, uh, yeah, there there was actually supposed to be another fight scene with Sonya and Jade, but that got cut out. Yes, it was. Yeah, the second draft of the script script, um, had a a very detailed fight between them. Jade was full of tattoos. Uh, I want to see dragons and tigers or something like that. And she didn't don her, her staff. Um, she actually had two half moon daggers, which was mm. different, but uh, you know, it's unfortunate that they cut that out because I think we needed a bit more uh, Sonya in the fight scenes, but you know, alas, um, you know, I did enjoy uh, for the most part, the, the Kano fight. Uh, the music was uh, a, another great selection. Oh, uh, Jukon Jezebel by KMFDM, uh, a great tune. Uh, there's, of course, Kano's uh, iconic uh, knife uh, that mm. I actually own. I don't have it on display right now, but yeah, it's it's a, a lovely um, knife for sure. <laughs> <And> <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, you sound like what an Australia would say. That's a that's a lovely knife there. That's a lovely knife. <laughs> Chris was actually saying that before we started this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just finishing off my meal. It's like, hey, Lou, that's a good looking knife you got there. I like, oh, well, thanks, man. <laughs> Did you think oh that? Uh, I think it was a shame that he got killed so quickly, though. I think he could have given a bit more to uh, the film. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. I was. Uh, I was. Oh, go on, Tasty. Go on, all yours, man. Yeah, like, I mean, even just kind of opening up uh, with him towards the beginning of the movie, as I've explained, you know, where you really get to um, properly get introduced to Kano's character, who he is and what he does, that would have just been so much more effective and cinematic, but instead introducing him, he's just standing there with Shang Tsung be like, Oh, oh, oh we talking about, you know, random stuff. And it's like, Oh, who's this guy? Who's this guy with the, with the uh, robotic eye? Oh, mm. you know, it could have been introduced a lot better, I think. So yeah. it's, it's a real shame, but uh, go on Lou. Yeah, no, to be fair, man, that's exactly like, near enough what I was about to say myself, even just with the uh, okay. pie plate. I was actually about to say, like, it would have been good to actually see how he got that because obviously there's so mm. many different stories as to how he got that. It's kind of like how Jack, Jack's got his arms now, mm. kind of thing. Like, <laughs> it, <laughs> like poor Jack's, man. But, <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, no, it's, it would have been good if they did actually show, um, again, a little bit more background in so but at the same time i think because it was just such a fan service film for me personally like it was just, just a mortal combat fan walks in straight away and it goes that's kano straight away they would know it because they will say oh the silver eye the red eye come now like so for me i i, I think it's still so sick so sick that's they that's another thing um where I'm going to have to up the points with Kano for this film is that mm. he has the metal faceplate. I was mm. very, very disappointed that uh, Josh Lawson uh, didn't quite have, well, didn't have the mm. cybernetic part. Um, now, I do understand that uh, they toyed with that idea and they actually tried, I believe, uh, mm. some renditions, but they just couldn't quite find it. So ultimately they just kind of did what they did, um, mm. which is a shame. Uh, we all want Lawson back. If he does come back, good Lord, they better f uh, figure it out <laughs> and bring it back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the fans <laughs> are going to be have pretty a good. Movie without the face plate. It's yeah. just, it wouldn't be right. Yeah. No, it's funny it's though, that we actually say like Josh Lawson's one is actually still really good. Um, but obviously we've got the metal plate for the 95, but yeah, he never used it. Mm. Oh yeah, he that's true. That's, kind of odd. <laughs> well, th that's another that's point true. I want to bring up. So in this one, I it's noticed crazy, that <laughs> almost all of the characters are just like normal people. They don't really use any special abilities. So, for example, mm. Kano, you know, did he do his cannonball? No. You know, did he do anything no, with no. with that's the eye laser? No. Did he do anything? Did he throw his knife? No. So really, he was just like a a generic thug that mm. you know just talked smack and beat Sonya around a bit. That was it, really. Like the, these these <laughs> moves, the moves are <laughs> as iconic as the characters themselves. So if you don't do the moves, yeah, you know that that's where mm. I think it fell over a bit. Like Sonya did her leg grab, but then you know there was no kiss of yeah. death. There was you know she didn't do her no. um, ring toss thing. Like nothing. Yeah, that's actually somewhere where the new film by far reigns yeah. superior is, is the special abilities yep. and whatnot. I was Definitely. very disappointed that they didn't display it too much in the I mean, original. You got Johnny mm. Cage's sh uh, nut punch. Uh, shadow kick. You did a nut punch at least yeah, this nut time. Nut punch. Uh, you have Liu Kang's bicycle kick. You have his fireball at the very end of the movie. Is Although that fireball ones? is more, so you, it's more yeah, like a fire well, punch. Well, there's Raiden, obviously. Isn't it? Yeah, so you have uh, Johnny Cage does have the shadow kick, but he does it in between the teleport, doesn't he? Yes, yes. So you do That's have right. that, but he doesn't have the sh um, the projectile um, energy ball. Um, nope. Liu Kang fireball and the bicycle kick. The only thing you didn't mm -hmm. get was the fire. Um, we mentioned Sonya's bit. Yeah, Sonya uh, Katana like didn't even have a fight. Yeah, and she uh, didn't have a 
Did she even have her fangs? Not now? really. <laughs> she was just walking <laughs> so unarmed the whole time. Yeah, yeah that's it. She's just that's walking true, around, Chris. just giving people advice yeah. <laughs> what to do. <laughs> yeah, there was that kind of like slow, weird stop motion fight with her. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And Liu Kang. I'm like, uh, it wasn't exactly. Yeah, yeah. Great. And I think <laughs> no, and yet she done training for that as well. <laughs> I think yeah. the other thing that the movies seem to always overlook, even in the new one to some extent, is costume. So mm. Sonya's more or less in black the whole time, except when she's wearing that weird leather-looking dress. But to me, like yeah. they don't have to dress like they do in the games. <laughs> but they should, like Luke no. Kang, at some point should have put like a headband on or something. You know, like I know in the original he doesn't yeah. have a headband. Something. But from two onwards, he does. And to me, that would make him look more like yeah. Liu Kang. Like, even Katana, mm. she's predominantly blue, royal blue. Her costume wasn't mm. blue. You know? <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait. <laughs> Katana's outfit wasn't blue. How dare you? <laughs> That's not Katana. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you're all right, though, man. Like... Uh, like Scorpion Sub Zero's outfits, like even looking at them now, you'd see them as like kind of cosplay yeah. like outfits. But <laughs> I st- I still rate them so much, so so. Oh, much. I love them. Um, and Raiden, like you can kind of say like, okay, this it's, it's pretty like just a standard <laughs> gown, <laughs> like you know, like kind of like it's, it's borrowed from Lord of the Rings, like white Gandalf, like <laughs> Gandalf slash bathrobe man from Kmart. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. But Shang Tsung, Shang Tsung's out. Oh, there. that coat though! I that want coat, that coat. That, that coat though, I tell you, that coat is something else. <sighs> And they and brought it back for code. MK11 as yeah. well. It was so, beautiful. So needed. It, yeah, it, it is. It's amazing. So, so good. See, I think in, in this movie, yeah. like, Kerry, I could, we could have a whole podcast about Kerry because his performance was so <laughs> iconic. God. But the difference in this movie is I felt like he was portrayed as a much stronger character than in the newest movie. Mm. So, for instance, the soul mm. steel, we saw that very early on. And ninety-nine percent of those watching would, would, in the cinema would have sat back and gone, "Whoa, this guy!" Especially if you don't know mm. who Shang Tsung is, if you just watch the movies mm. as a casual, you know, Shang Tsung is just the guy that runs the tournament. But hang on a minute, he's powerful as hell. Like yeah, yeah, you yeah. fear him, you want to fear him he's as as the people. audience too. Mm, yes, and, and speaking of that, Chris, uh, I you you are correct. You you find you get that feeling almost uh, immediately because when the movie's first taking off, for instance, in uh, Shang Tsung's boat, the scene where the most iconic Mortal Kombat characters of all time, Scorpion mm. and Sub Zero, walk out, he says in his speech, "They are you know the worst of enemies. of enemies." Yeah. Deadliest of enemies, but slaves yep. under my power. Yep. And right there, it's like, oh, shit. Don't mm, mess with yep. that guy. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so I thought that was uh, beautifully done. And just the fact as well that Raiden basically kept um, you know, reiterating to Liu Kang that he is far more dangerous than Goro. And fighting Shang Tsung is not fighting one, but a legion of adversaries remember mm. that so yeah. powerful gives you chills mm. and i think they executed that perfectly so and just deli- the, the delivery of his <laughs> yeah. lines too like he just had this real you know slow intensity to him you know you would you would hang off every mm. word he said and would almost like resonate within you you know like when he said your soul is mine just the way he delivered that you know the movie would obviously mm. continue oh. but you were sitting there as as the viewer like you know, your soul is mine, your soul is mine. Like, and, and to this day, yeah. like he's known for that because it is so iconic. Oh, mm. oh yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what they do so much better from the 95 to 21 again, like, because like near enough, every single time you do see Shang Tsung in the film, he's either morphed into someone else to manipulate them to come mm. to the tournament or mm. he's literally just stealing souls or like literally every single time you see him or hear of him 
he's doing something that you shouldn't be doing he's bending the rules <laughs> and it's giving you that like yeah this guy he's he's like he's going to do anything to take over where like the 2021 yeah. version like he is good uh chin chin han is that am i right to say so chin han like he was really good at shang song but like there wasn't enough like him like being menacing he wasn't like stealing many souls at all like yeah we saw kung lao of course like what happened to him but there was actually like an extra scene for the 2021 movie where it like he like he's just talking to melina uh like taking uh she's like talking back at him or something it's like i've made you in this and that and then like stills like uh is it like it's not a shadow priest is it it's like it's just an um no. someone outside of outworld or in outworld he just stills their soul and it's like that that needed For to sure. be in that film to show how much of character development like how scared people should be of shang Tsung, and they just didn't Highly like they just took that out I'm, I, I that can literally was an, see it in your face, though, Toasty, scene. that you wanted to say it. <laughs> you wanted to say that. <laughs> you, you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> yeah. You son like, of a bitch. You're going to mention no, this. Yeah. I'm going to beat him to it, uh, cheeky boy. <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of um, yeah. what, Scorpion? What a shame. So mm. his harpoon mm. was, yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it was this weird <laughs> bird head. Possessed bird head <laughs> slash dinosaur. Yeah, it, was the, it was the bird head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm probably going to be a minority here. I actually loved it. Um, I did you know, actually enjoy it, to be fair. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's very, very unpopular opinion. Um, you know, it's not true to the games. They took a liberty there or they changed it up. But <sighs> in a way, I can kind of understand why they did it. Because, um, what? I mean, yeah, you look at it now and you're laughing at it. <laughs> That's the worst CGI I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> the, con <laughs> the concept is there. And at the time, it's like, holy shit, that's that's fucking terrifying you know imagine mm. this screeching creature will go at any extent and follow you wherever you go to really just gnaw at you and i find that um you know absolutely petrifying so i get that um i i thought it was pretty cool and um you know there were a number of people that liked it and again this is one of those things that carried on over to the not just the sequel but conquest television series as well so clearly it did resonate with with uh, a number of people um mm. yeah chris casamasa though absolute legend he's still all out there out of vents and stuff like that and really passionate yeah. about his character in mortal Kombat. a lot of respect um yeah he, he was lovely in the movie uh you mentioned the costume before even though it's a little generic and basic and some people really judge it for that um I kind of like that simplicity though, and and I think um, I think it was very effective. I liked it. Um, I really liked um, you know the way that they made his eyes look in this movie. I, th mm. I thought it was perfect. Um, for whatever reason, uh, they got rid of those exact same uh, sort of contacts that he was wearing for Conquest. He looked a little too human in Conquest, and I didn't like that. Um, yeah, so um, I just loved seeing all the scenes with him. Oh, uh, the fight scene, in my opinion, with Scorpion and Johnny Cage was the best fight scene in the whole film. Yeah, um, Ooh. that was good. Oh lord! Now, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lou, Lou, Ooh. the one with Liu Kang and Reptile though is pretty <laughs> epic. That one, and I'd say yeah, that's are, just 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 behind it. Heart right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah, it's just just behind it. It was fascinating, but mm. um, I just loved uh, the way they directed the the Scorpion fight. I loved mm. that uh, intense punchy music by I want to say by Fear Factor. I think mm -hmm. Fear Factory uh, when they were fighting in the, you know, Scorpion's Lair kind of thing. Uh, some of the wide shots were beautiful. Uh, now, <laughs> you can kind of tell, you, especially <laughs> especially when you're watching on an 85 inch TV. Oh, you wait, can yeah. clearly see it's like, that's not Lyndon in that wide shot. That's JJ <laughs> Perry. <laughs> Susan but, Boyle. But, you know, what? It's Susan Boyle. <laughs> 
this is a boil. <laughs> but, you know, for, uh, 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 we were talking about special abilities and, and fatalities and things like this. Uh, Scorpion does the toasty fatality, mm. uh, you know, at the end of it. So I thought that was uh, fabulous as well. Mm. How about those special effects when Question Scorpion explodes though, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> well, that definitely happened, Chris. What are you talking about? They just paid that stunt man a lot of money, man. <laughs> I love the friendship there, eh? Yeah. With Johnny Cage. So good. So that's good. That's it. That's it. Um, I was actually going to leave with that. Oh, yeah. You know, um, at the end of that fight, though, where um, there was obviously a picture of Johnny Cage and it says to like my biggest fan, Johnny Cage, who had that picture? Was that Scorpion or... Was that Johnny Cage? He always, <laughs> always has one like laying around in his pocket. It was, like, it was, it was Scorpion, what? just a number one fan of Johnny Cage. It was like this is the way he always wanted to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because I've heard that before, Lou. But I mean, you know, realistically, you know, I'm, I'm gonna. It's gonna go down to I think uh, Johnny Cage's character. You know, he, he's a cocky son of a bitch. He wants to yeah, show definitely. that he's the real goods. He wants mm. to show that he's the real goods. He's probably going to that island, not only proving that he's the real deal, but you know, to, for 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 people to recognize him and be like, "Oh, That's you it. know my film? <laughs> Here you go. Yeah, Here's my it. autograph." You know Classic what I mean? Johnny. He's just those, one of those kind of guys. So, mm. yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But this is actually one of the things on the uh, trivia that I was actually going to mention as well. Like, I didn't really. I, I knew that they said about um, they had so they done like a test screening for Mortal Kombat before it was actually released and then they pushed it back because they had to do some ah. reshoots. Um, and I knew that they done a uh, Liu Kang and Reptile fight scene. Like, they added that after the test screening. That's one of the reshoots. But the as other well one as that the they Scorpion did, fight. Yeah, as well as the Scorpion and Johnny. Now, I knew that they'd done it then, but I didn't know at what point did they just start adding scenes. And it was literally like... It was shortly after the shadow kick, wasn't it? Because the way that it was originally meant to be was that um, Johnny was actually running up to Scorpion, and before when they teleport, like that was actually meant to be the point where Johnny does his shadow kick, and that was it, finished. But then, like when they teleported, that's uh, all that was like the reshoots from what I read up, anyway. Okay, yeah, I didn't get. Uh... No, I didn't hear that much about it, but all I do know is that, yes, originally in the movie, Johnny Cage does encounter Scorpion. Mm. Uh, That much I can confirm for sure. Mm. Um, But yes, obviously, as you're indicating, uh, the entire Scorpion's Lair scene was additional. And my God, am I glad that they added these two scenes because those two fight scenes... Well, probably not to everybody, but to me, are some of the greatest fight scenes ever. Uh, I think they flowed so uh, wonderfully, mm. and it's a highlight of the film. So much fun to watch. MK2021 uh, should have been more like those. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. The long shots. Uh, so, <laughs> That's you know, wanted, baby. <laughs> because without these two scenes, uh, the movie, in a sense... Uh, geez, this is going to be a ballsy thing to say, but almost would have been a little boring. <laughs> so well, I'm, well, I'm this so- one. sorry. What, what's boring? What's boring? <laughs> no, I said if they didn't add those two fight scenes in, it, oh. it almost oh. would have been boring <laughs> because that was the Especially complaint with like, the with the test screen. The out at this point, <laughs> but you're all good, buddy. <laughs> yeah. But that that's but listen, as as a diehard fan. You know, that's what a lot of the test audiences were saying was that, mm. okay, the movie is good. And, and it was, like I said, there's so many good things about it, but you need that extra oomph. You know, there needs mm. to be more fights. That is what Mortal Kombat essentially is all about is, is mm. you know, the great fights. Um, so the fact that they added it in, like those are for me, those are my two favorite scenes in the movie. So yeah, definitely. I am ever so grateful for that. I agree. If, if they weren't I mean, in, it would have been, yeah, way too flat. So different. I couldn't yes. tell you how many yes. times I've gone onto YouTube and just watched that school, uh, that uh, reptile and Liu Kang fight. <laughs> like, I've, I've literally, I've watched that so I many have to times. Admit, that's my it's favorite. Just, it beats the Scorpion Johnny so one. Okay. 
Just a bit, but. <laughs> it, it, meant, it, it was hard for me to pick. They're both, they're both so good. And again, uh, I, I, here I am saying it again, but the music. The music, the music yeah, man, so much. The uh, control by Juno Reactor. Mm. That's one of the best tracks in the film for the reptile fight. Because literally, mm. you hear the first chord of that song. It's like, what do you think? Reptile. Yeah. Reptile. Yeah. That's his theme. Reptile. All my life, that has been his theme. I just love that one, man. It's mm. so good. And a funny story. Uh, uh, I believe I believe the studio originally wanted, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound weird, but kind of like classic rock for the movie. Like, really? And I'm like, oh, thank God they didn't go with that. And uh, they tried to <laughs> influence the studio. We kind of want a certain edge to this film. We want to try kind of like a, like an electronic, kind of like a, a techno EDM sort of thing. They're like, no, no. Anyways, they got away with it. And uh, lo and behold, it was literally one of the uh, fastest, best-selling uh, movie soundtracks for the longest time it it hit number one on the charts and uh, the music still resonates with us today and mm -hmm. i um i i would honestly be ecstatic and happy if they sort of brought back that same atmosphere and the music uh to the newer films because Definitely. um yes because the new film didn't really have that and uh you i'm you guys will probably agree with me I didn't like the yeah, new <laughs> Mortal Kombat theme as much. I, it was a little. I'm not too, into that whole yeah, dubstep dub dub thing. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, hearing Transformers having sex after so long, it's like, okay, well, we get it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I, well, a comparison. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Toasty, it's like you went straight into my brain and you just went like that's exactly what he's thinking. He's thinking Transformers having sex. Like I'm just gonna take exactly what Remind Luke's me never to read right your now, mind. And I'm gonna steal it because I've stolen so many things from you. <laughs> epic. So epic. In, in terms of um Goro, in the new one he was CGI. In this one he was robotic. So, mm. <laughs> personally, I think he looked pretty cool. I've actually seen the Goro head in person. It's at Netherrealm Studios in a glass mm. case. What? So, I've, I've seen it. Oh. I've got photos of it. <laughs> That's mad. It looks really cool. Oh. And the skin texture is, is pretty realistic. But I think what let... Sweet. I mean, you know, this is the time of, you know, Jurassic Park. And, you know, a lot of movies were using this technique. So, I wasn't too critical of Goro's movements. But I think his voice is what let him down. Because mm -hmm. he, I'm sorry, say that again. His voice, I think. Jerk. Say that again, yeah, me and Toasty. You don't, you like, don't think he, did, he didn't what? sound great? <laughs> no, I got to say, I thought the voice was actually banging. <laughs> really? <laughs> like, I thought it was it fucking was right. amazing. I it was good. I was watching it. <laughs> Time to die. Oh, it was I so it just good. Sounded so cheesy. <laughs> and, and I, I just oh, didn't think. Kevin Michael it. Richardson, brother. I, I Come just, on. I don't know. Oh well, you know, to each their own. I don't know. To each their own. Yeah, that's um, it. I mean, I I liked I liked his voice so much better than the MK uh, 2021 version. That's the one that I didn't really like. You know what mm. I mean? I don't. Know. I that think they just didn't sounded... really have much for him in the 2021 no. to say though did they really like, did no they, they didn't really have tear much out your spine <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. get off me <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, whereas yeah, cool. you know he the old the one old it's me. just it's so <laughs> iconic right, let, let me backpedal a little bit this mortal will be let, let no me back problem let me backpedal no, before yeah, Chris is the daggers shooting saying, through everyone. the windows <laughs> but I didn't mind the voice so much as some of some of the laughs and some of some of the lines like sometimes he'd be like he'd kill somebody he'd be like ha, ha, ha. and it just <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is that's that, that, okay, okay. Like, the voice i don't have a problem with the voice let's let's again. make that clear 
it was it was some of the laughter and some of some of the lines sounded yeah. weird like you know if you rip someone's heart out or whatever and then he goes <laughs> it just doesn't sound right yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sometimes it's hard to take you know his his, his uh, ever so powerful voice seriously though when you see his like robotic <laughs> movements we've let these humans win for long enough <laughs> ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say though, like, that montage of like everyone just falling on the floor, like even if they had yeah. repeats and they just flip the camera that. angle, like, I could watch that for about a I actually thought that hours, would be an incredible least, boomerang just, just, just to loop it over and over again. <laughs> 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 and I think that, that probably went like three times longer than it had to. Like, so I think if you good. had three or four bodies, that was enough. But it was like 16, I don't 17, know. 18. Yeah, <laughs> Wait, yeah honestly, that, that was so a bit good. redundant. Yeah, there was like quite a lot of them in there. There must have been about 18, 19 of them. Was like, <laughs> <laughs> and you have to admit, when you got hit Madness. with the, the nut punch, and he was like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Those are five hundred dollars oh, sunglasses, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah. It's like something you would see on a Saturday morning yeah. cartoon. And then when, you, when he was falling, he was like, oh. <laughs> "Poor Gore." Gotta man. love it. Gotta love it. I think that's part of its charm because it was like, it was cheesy. Yeah. It was like nineties cheese. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. But the uh, it does still like ask the question though. Would you still prefer the puppet over the CGI version or not? Well, go on, you know what? Go on, Chris. <laughs> I'm, I'm oh. gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. Okay, yeah. I much prefer uh, a, a practical effects uh, as opposed to an overabundance of CGI. Yeah, mm. I don't like that. It, it looks way too cartoony after a while, and just. You can tell it's fake. Um, mm. You know, I think with... Um, I think they could do a, pr- a pretty good job with, like, you know, the the puppets or whatever yeah. nowadays. I think it still could work. I mean, this is 95, and this was the first of its kind, uh, Goro. Mm. You know, that was a, a big thing for them. Um, the, yeah, this was all new grounds for them, so... That's you, what they you, spent you most of the money on as well, wasn't it? That's what most of the budget oh, was actually spent I'll, on, wasn't it? It was I'll, Goro was Goro a large amount of the money and um my god it took <laughs> this sounds absurd but it took like 13 minimum different people to operate Goro mm, yeah. uh, during his scenes uh and they got paid more than any of the actors of the main actors on the movie mm. so it was it was a big thing but as i was saying you know i think that they could still do a good job uh with you know the uh, the puppet kind of thing, because uh, a perfect example that I can think of, actually, uh, we're going to go uh, into Star Wars territory, but in uh, <laughs> what's the movie called? The Last Jedi? Uh, yeah. When you see oh. Yoda? When yeah. you see Yoda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, go on. <laughs> Awful, disgusting film. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, when you've seen Yoda, <laughs> uh, I thought he looked terrific. I, I never th- even thought that it was a puppet, oh, it was the puppet until then, after. It? it was the puppet, right? yeah. That was a puppet. That was not yeah. CGI. And right there, it comes to show that they can be successful, I, I strongly believe. Um, now, obviously, it's going to be a much more challenging, uh, I would think, you know, to make a four-armed shokin and this and that, you know, big, tall. Mm. Um, but, you yeah, know, I think they could do it. But I think it's sadly... A little too late now for uh, the new uh, Mortal Kombat films because they already, of course, uh, have used uh, Goro with CGI and, and Reptile and things like this. So if they went into the sequel or whatever, just with a puppet now, you know, <laughs> it might be too painfully obvious. It was it is the so. original puppet from Night Five as well. <laughs> 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 yeah, you just see like super glue on the legs and the arms yeah. and stuff. You got Robin your shoes like signature on the leg and stuff. As well. Can we agree that Reptile probably has the greatest CGI ever known to, you know, the film industry? 
<laughs> oh, Definitely. man, the CGI was phenomenal for Reptile in 95. <laughs> he looked like uh, Gex or whatever from PS1. That is yeah. top of the line. No, no, absolutely atrocious. <laughs> yeah, bad, when he, when he bad. Came here, yeah. I'm yeah, like, thank God, bad. I don't have to see this anymore. <laughs> oh, God. <Yeah. laughs> that, that was a pain for the, uh, well, to the other. Especially in 1080p. Them. You know, <laughs> like you said, on a big TV, it would just... It would just amplify. It was different on the CRTs. It was like, oh, yeah. yeah. But, you know. <laughs> two flaws I want to point out, I think. Well, not two flaws, but there were two scenes where Shang Tsung said flawless victory. And oh. they weren't flawless. No. <laughs> yeah, that's so, I think, <laughs> that's I think that was a fail. <laughs> but I think some of the real redeeming um, features in this film was the fact that Scorpion... When he said, get over here or get down here, mm. you know, that was Ed <laughs> Boon's voice. That was epic. And welcome. welcome. That was so good. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, when, when Reptile appears, you hear Steve Ritchie, Reptile. Like that was. Yes. Like, man. Oh, honestly. chills. Chills down my spine. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. When I first bought the um, album, or like bought the soundtrack, I was so gutted that that bit wasn't actually on the soundtrack. It's like, Fair. <laughs> Fair. I was like, damn. Yeah. But yeah. Still. So we, ha- yeah, we have been sort of waffling on for a while. So, in terms of final thoughts and a score, um, Toasty, did you want to kick us off with that? Sure, absolutely. Uh, so let's see here. The fight scenes were um, tremendous. Um, you know, I'm going to give them between an eight point five and a nine out of ten just for the fight scenes alone. I thought they were so well executed. Um, uh, let's see the music. I've praised that. Uh, in terms of just even the basic score by George S. Clinton, um, was lovely, um, very suiting. Um, even the music when we first see Scorpion in the Sub Zero, uh, that was a, a, a phenomenal track. Um, you know. They could have dived in a little bit more with some of the characters, uh, as we've discussed, uh, Sonya and Kano. We needed to see more of what's going on there. Um, I wish they dived into, uh, some people might not agree with this, but I think a lot will. I think they should have dived into a little bit more of the romantic side of Liu Kang and Kitana. Because, uh, you know, Lutana, that's kind of like the thing, right? It's, <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of the diehards, that's what we want to see. And uh, originally, it was written in the script. Uh, Robin Shu, in fact, was uh, looking forward to that. But the studio decided, no, we want to concentrate on the action. So they cut it out. Uh, which is unfortunate. Because, <laughs> because when, you watch this, when you watch the sequel directly after... It seems way too fast, rushed, and what? They're all suddenly in love? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, mm. I have lost everything, but I'm not going to lose you too. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, there was no buildup. So that was a shame. Um, to this again. Guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out. <laughs> again. Oh. I, I, I've been around for like 10,000 years. I'm flattered and all that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, oh, oh. Whoa, 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 I mean, whoa, whoa. Something, something, you know. <laughs> um, performances were uh, legendary. Most of the casting was spot on. Uh, and then you go to Annihilation and they changed all these actors. And I don't necessarily. <laughs> I, I have that one. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's that's for our next our next time. But um, I can't wait. Uh, I didn't I didn't uh, like a lot of the performances in Annihilation, but ninety five nailed it. Um, anyways, I don't want to digress too much here. But my final score, I would give this film. Honestly, okay. Let me say this: if I could go back in time, uh, Chris, to our very first episode where we reviewed the new movie. I, w- I think I, now that I've watched uh, both of them, uh, I would give the new one maybe a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10, whereas the OG one, I'm going to give a 9 out of 10. I seriously am. I think it was so incredibly done. And there are a lot of things for this film that, um, uh, you know, the people working on uh, the new sequel, they, they really need to jot that down. 
because there, there's some improvements that need to be done. percent Yeah. Definitely. All right, Lou, did you want to go next? Yeah, I mean, to be completely honest, like the Reptile and Liu Kang fight scene will always be my number one go-to for every reason. Like the lead up to <laughs> it, the music to it, the actual bicycle fight kick. scenes. The, yeah, the bicycle kick. Like even Perfect. the lead up to that as well. Just the CGI. A, <laughs> yeah. No, it's not Chris, it's real. Like God, oh, how many times uh, have I, got I, I don't mean to cut you off. With. <laughs> I don't mean to cut you off, but uh, here's a fun fact for everybody watching. In that fight scene, uh, if you look closely in the background, um, there is actually an exact replica of the window design uh, from the arena The Tower from Mortal Kombat 2, just ever so present in the background. That was very Ooh. interesting. And towards the end of the fight, when um, Liu Kang is starting to get the upper hand against Reptile, if you look closely on the wall, you'll see uh, a number of icons that are shown. This is a special code for Mortal Kombat 3, which was released four months before the movie. And in, when oh, you input man. that special... When you input that special code, uh, it randomizes your character before the match, and you'll be somebody unexpected. So oh, that was no pretty way. interesting. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. uh, what was that for? Mortal Kombat Three. Mortal Kombat Three. It came out. I think I want to say four months before the movie. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I might actually yeah. try it on my arcade one-up machine to see if it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, <clears throat> But yeah, no, with um, like the fight scenes alone, like yeah, they got added into it after the pre-screening and everything. Um, I love the characters. Like, I love that you got Liu Kang as like I know there's three of them, like Johnny, Sonya, and Liu Kang. But you do see Liu Kang as the main protagonist throughout the film. Like, I think that works. Uh, he's there's just a lot of good stories behind him, um, and like the outfits, everything to go with this film. There's just so much nostalgia, like, and again, the original, like, Mortal Kombat theme tune, like, every single time you'll just hear that, Mortal Kombat! <laughs> like, it's just, mate, I, I know I'm going to be, like, going down memory lane. So for me, like, yeah, it's a 9 out of 10 for me as well, I would say. <laughs> um, I think it's just, there's just so much to live up to from that film, like, the, like, the iconic characters and the actors that like portray these characters so again with what Toast is saying that the MK 2021 when they do go back to the sequel like they need to go back to this one particular and see yeah. what they can do like take notes and see what works yep. you know because it's it worked for a reason and it's still working now so you said it that's it that's it but what about you Chris what are you saying sir I mean, I'll keep it pretty brief. Um, watching it for the first time in like 20 years, I found myself smiling so many times mm. because I forgot. I remembered key scenes, but I forgot so much. I appreciated the acting. I thought, you know, I knew Kerry was, he stole the show, but, you know, watching it again, especially after playing MK11 and hearing his voice, mm. man, the guy, that will live on forever. That Definitely. trailer, Shang Tsung. 100%. That'll live on forever. Um. I enjoyed the story. I thought the story was good. I, I missed the tournament. That's what I think, again, like I said before, that was what's missing from the new one. And I think overall, they just nailed it with the music, the scenes, everything they did. Um, again, Toast, if I was to go back to the very first episode of the podcast, I would probably downgrade the new movie <laughs> score. Yeah. And again, I would give this a 9 out of 10. So that's 9. It's across nice. the board, right? Right. Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. I'm I gonna just get think it was so much printed, fun, and I'm gonna have it like right here, where it's like Mortal Kombat Nine. <laughs> the <free laughs> and we're gonna have like this picture right here. That's it. All of us yep. just smiling for the nine. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it was exciting watching that, but we do have to move on to the the sequel for the next episode. So <laughs> we may sequel. need to incorporate some you know, strong drinks or something while yes. we review that one. This um, is granted. Yes, yeah. <laughs> definitely. But um, <laughs> guys, it's been amazing to get back together again. I really appreciate oh, definitely. it. Um, it's always a whole lot of fun. 
And yeah, it was great to sit and chat to you about such a great movie. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, it's always fun for me to join you guys and have a chat with you about Mortal Kombat, you two legends. And uh, <laughs> absolutely. you boys need to carry on doing what you guys are doing because you're doing so much for the community. Really appreciate like, it. And it's, Thanks, brother. Yeah, it's amazing. And everyone listening will 100% agree with me on this one. Learning so, as we go, we're doing the best we can. So, Yeah, and it's, it's working. Right. Keep going, lads. Keep going. Appreciate it. Okay. So, for everybody watching... Thank you so very much for tuning into the episode today. It's always a pleasure to speak about such a beloved film. Make sure to keep tabs on Kamidogu as we are excited to bring you another similar episode reviewing MK Annihilation in the future. Prior to concluding, it's important to realize that in just a little over a week from now that it's going to be the Christmas holiday. So myself... Chris and Kung Lu here would <laughs> like to wish you. Let, let's let's say it on three, guys. Uh, you okay, uh, a Merry Christmas and a three, two, one. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas. <laughs> Be yeah, sure to sp- <laughs> <laughs> not really. You watch um, out of sync, it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, be sure to spread that Christmas cheer and spend it with loved ones. For some, it may be sub-zero temperatures out there, but that's just a great excuse to sit next to that fireplace, grab a cup of hot cocoa, and stay toasty with family and friends. So with that being said, have fun, stay cheeky, and (laughs) stay flawless. (laughs) (laughs) you practiced that didn't you (laughs) (laughs) not at all